Dozens of migrants are believed to have died after their boats capsized in the Mediterranean off the coast of Tunisia. The UN's International Organization for Migration says at least 50 people died in the incident, with 16 survivors. But the Tunisian state media reports that 70 migrants drowned. Let's get more international stories now. Juliana Olainka is standing by with Around the World in 5. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom in London. Four foreign hostages have been rescued by French special forces in northern Burkina Faso. Two French soldiers were killed during the covert operation. They've been named as Cédric de Pierpont and Hélène Bertoncello. President Emmanuel Macron expressed his condolences. He also praised the armed forces for their efforts. Two Frenchmen who'd been kidnapped from a national park in Benin last week, an American woman and a South Korean woman, were freed in the raid. Four kidnappers were also killed. The United States has increased tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods. The hike coming midway through last-ditch negotiations in Washington. Import taxes on products from 5,700 categories rose from 10% to 25%. Tensions between the two largest economies escalated after Beijing revised a draft deal last week. On Twitter, President Trump said the tariffs will make America much stronger and that China should not renegotiate deals with the U.S., at the last minute. The United States is comfortable with the outcome whichever way it goes, but we would be happy if we could have an agreement with China. Uh, remains to be seen if that can be done. Hong Kong says it's hoping for the best but preparing for the worst. And France has warned the dispute poses the single biggest threat to global growth. It means that trade tariffs will go up, fewer jobs will circulate around the world, we won't be able to circulate our own French goods as easily around the world and jobs will be destroyed. A trade war will destroy jobs in France and in Europe and in this area too, Europe has to unite to resist that. World growth forecasts have slowed down over the last 12 months because of increasing concerns about the trade tension between China and the US. Uh, we were all hoping, uh, and, and all the signs looked positive, that there was going to be a deal. So uh, it's a bit of a blow to find over the last few days uh, that see things seem to have taken a negative turn. I am still optimistic that a deal will get done between China uh, and the US, um, but it's certainly yet again going to the wire. South Africa's governing ANC party is set for victory, but election results suggest it's facing its worst performance ever. Final numbers are due tomorrow, and it's clear the African National Congress will retain power, but it will be with a reduced majority. The general election is the first test of national sentiment since President Cyril Ramaphosa replaced Jacob Zuma as head of state in February last year. Photos have been released of the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un watching the state second missile test in less than a week. According to South Korea, two rockets were fired, covering distances of 420 and 270 kilometers. Japan says the latest launch violates United Nations resolutions, and it called for a halt to the ballistic weapons tests. Forces loyal to the UN-backed Libyan government are advancing on Tripoli. A large convoy of vehicles carrying dozens of men have left Misrata to join the battle against Libyan National Army fighters. Loyal to Khalifa Haftar, more than 60,000 people have been displaced since the LNA's offensive began at the start of April. A Saudi Arabian vessel, which was due to pick up weapons from a port in France, has left the area without its cargo. Two human rights groups have been fighting to block the ship from accessing its load, arguing it contravened an international arms treaty. A French judge threw out the complaint, but tracking data shows the ship is now sailing towards Santander in Spain. Three Venezuelan opposition lawmakers have taken shelter in foreign embassies. Richard Blanco of the Brave People's Alliance Party is one of ten members of parliament to lose congressional immunity. He reportedly sought refuge at the Argentine embassy. The crackdown by the Supreme Court came after lawmakers joined opposition leader Juan Guaido in rallies to trigger a military rebellion. A German woman who posed as a billionaire heiress has been jailed in New York. 28-year-old Anna Sorokin stole more than $200,000 by scamming banks, boutique hotels and friends. She was sentenced to at least four years in prison. The judge was fair. She considered all of our sentencing memorandums and our arguments. Uh, the plea was three to nine, so there was no way that there was ever going to be a sentence that was less than the plea. And uh, I think we're both 
satisfied with the result. Obviously, we would have hoped for less time, but certainly this was uh, expected. And finally, the world's richest man, Jeff Bezos, is planning to send a spaceship to the moon. The founder of rocket company Blue Origin, he unveiled a lander which will be the site of a house. Called Blue Moon, the unmanned craft will be able to ferry payloads and have the capacity to carry four rovers. The ultimate aim is to establish a lunar base for people within the next five years. It's time to go back to the moon, this time to stay. And that's your international news around the world in five. Many thanks, Juliana. Now, Ayo has the latest in the world of sports. Many thanks, I'm Melinda. Dominic Thiem has saved two match points on his way to producing a fantastic comeback win and knockout three-time former Madrid Open champion Roger Federer. He made it through to his third consecutive semi-final on the red dirt after battling back to win 3-6, 7-6, 6-4. Nigeria's Gloria Nomen Nathaniel is set to be stripped of her African Championships 400 meters hurdles gold medal after she was given a four year doping ban by the Athletics Integrity Unit. The 23 year old, who reached the semi finals of the women's 400 meters hurdles at the 2017 IWF World Championships in London, has been sanctioned after she tested positive for banned steroids. And that's sports news. The news at 10 continues shortly. Many thanks, Ayo. And the main news again. The president today called for unity among Nigerians, and he said true federalism is what the country needs at this point in its history. President Buhari made the comment at an event where he was honored by the Progressive Governors Forum in Abuja. That's the news at 10 tonight. On behalf of the team, good night.